I'm gonna take the whole hood with me. Hey fam, it's your girl, Miss Diva Trucker. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see me. Um, I am going to do a video tonight discussing uh, what came out in Landline about um, a lawsuit that was um, in place since 2016 with uh, CRST against Trans Am. Hey, proud felon, can you hear me okay? Let me know if you can hear me okay. Turn the light, turn off the lights. Proud Bella, let me know if you can hear me okay. Is this microphone okay or do I need to make some changes or whatever the case may be? Let me know, let me know, let me know. It's fine, all right, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, let's talk about this, all right? Um, proud, uh, proud Phil. <laughs> Thank you. I got a little microphone, y'all. So, hey, shout out to Walmart, okay, for the little uh twenty dollar microphone. But um, um, what I wanted to talk to you all tonight is about. A lot of times, people have a question, and you may see um uh, lawsuits that uh have to do with. Um, companies taking other companies' students and they're not completing the contracts and things like that. Is it right? Is it wrong? Okay. So with Landline, Landline uh, posted an article, which is July the 20th, uh, that says CRST poaching lawsuit against Trans Am survives. Okay. What does that mean? That means that whenever it went up into the court of appeals, right? Whenever it went up to the Court of Appeals, uh, they sent it back down to the lower courts. This has been going on for uh, since 2016. So they sent it back down to the lower courts. What CRST is accusing, and you know that they do these lawsuits to any company that hired a driver. You know, Swift was one of them. Um, um, other companies have been some of them. They will go after uh, big companies if they see that a lot of their drivers are going to these companies without completing their contract, okay? You all know if you go to a training company that you did not pay up front and you use their program to get your CDL, they... Uh, have costs, you know, to train a driver, to get them the license and all that kind of stuff. The biggest issue that they have is that once a person gets their license, number one, they don't want a team. Okay. A lot of people don't want a team. Number two, the other issue that they have is that the pay is so low. Okay. Not a lot of drivers when they get in the industry will like to work for 20 cent a mile or 15, 20 cent, however they do it. Okay. Um, it, it's, 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 it's a tough thing. People got families, they got to, uh, uh, provide for a lot of people would rather leave the company and maybe pay out of pocket instead of staying there the whole year to complete the contract. But knowing that, you know, once you go, it's a sponsored program and a part of getting your license is to complete the, the program. OK, so that's why it's very careful that you select the uh, right company to go to. Uh, so you don't run into these issues. At least you could stay there a year, right? Until it's your time to go. But CRSC, they bring up this lawsuit all the time because they always you losing drivers. It costs a lot of money to come to to send you a bus ticket, to um, get you in a hotel, to uh, train you, to you know some of them may even feed you, to put you in a place to stay. It costs a lot of money to do that, right? So do they have the right? to sue other companies because you as a driver don't want to work for them no more. Um, you want to go somewhere else. It depends. 
It, it really depends, okay? And um, not only that, they're not you, you're actually not getting away with it because what they do, they go and put it on your credit report. They call you, harass you for the money and things like that, okay? So, you know, um, you got to be taking dr drastic measures in order to want to leave because of the harassment and the credit report and all things that you got to go through to, uh, to even get hired at another company. Company, okay. First of all, the company has to be able to accept you on the contract. Not a lot of companies do that. Okay. Um, because of this reason, because of in fear of being sued. Now, what CRST is saying is that um, they are saying with the CRST driver uh, training contract is that they accuse Trans Am of Trans Am of uh, actually going after their drivers and advertising to their drivers and saying, come work for us. You're going to make more money over here and things like that. Okay. Uh, which Trans Am or their defense is saying, no, we're going after all drivers. We're not just per, um, um, just, focusing on your drivers, we're going, when we do our advertisements, it's for everyone. It's for all the drivers. It's not just for uh, uh, any other company. It's for anybody that wants to uh, come and train with them, what their requirements for are, are and um, you're able to get in there. Now, what happens if you are with a contracted company and you try to go to another company? OK, what the company is going to do, they're going to block your information. OK, if you try to apply for another company, they're not going to release your information at all. So they don't know if you're a good driver, if you had any incidents. They don't know any of that information because the company that you are contracted to will not release any of that. OK, so if you are hired from if you are hired from one of these companies, they're just going based off of you got a CDL, uh, you went through training, and they're taking a chance on hiring you. Okay. Um, and they're saying that, you know, they don't know until after the fact. All right. Um, how to how can you determine if a company um intentionally interfered with uh, pulling your drivers away from you, right? If, if How can you prove that? How can you prove that you went directly after a driver that they have in their program, right? You have to prove certain things. One of the things that you have to prove is that um, you have to prove that it had a contract with a third party uh, carrier, right? And sometimes they don't know that. They don't know that you had a, con a contract. All they know is that you got your CDL and um, according to your NBR, it's clean and you don't have any felonies or tickets, so you're eligible for hire, right? Um, they have to also prove, Trans Am has to also prove that, uh, I mean, CRST has to also prove that CR, um, that Trans Am knew about you being on the contract, okay? So, you know, you can get around that too. Um, Trans Am, uh, CRST also has to prove that Trans Am initially, uh, intentionally and inappropriately interfered with the contract. Now that's where you're gonna have a problem, okay? Um, two, uh, uh, maybe two you can get away with, but normally, um, Normally, um, um, that's not the case. When they advertise, when a company advertise, they're not thinking about, oh, am I pulling CR English driver? Am I pulling Trans Am? I mean, uh, CRST driver? Am I pulling any company that has a training program driver? They don't go in with that intention, okay? They go in to get drivers. So a lot of drivers don't go to these schools. They go to private companies or they go to the college setting or whatever. So it's not intentional on the company's part that when they put out the uh, advertisements that it's just directed to CRST, okay? Because that's not the case.
It's not. They have their advertising pro, uh, platform, their marketing uh, platform, and it's for all drivers that qualify for them, not intentionally for CRST, CR England, Prime, or any other body, okay? They 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 can't prove that they did that, okay? Because everybody has their own marketing strategy. They have their own advertising um, program, and there's no way that I'm just going to put out an ad and I'm just going to get all of uh, CR English drivers or all of this person drivers, okay? There's not a way. It's, it's just huge mass advertising, right? And it's for everybody that qualifies. How do you know if you qualify? You got to call and see and you meet these certain um, criteria. Now, what these companies can do in order to lower their rate of people leaving is that they can make their programs better. OK, they can make it to a way that people want to stay. You know, um, people do not drivers don't want to uh, go from company to company to company when they first get in the industry and they first get in the CDL. Some of them feel like they kind of force and a lot of things that um and a lot of things that um, they didn't realize until after they get to the school and you're put in a situation, you may with a, be with a trainer, where is a bad trainer, you may be, you know, it's all different types of things that can, can happen. Do drivers normally, if you had a program in place and you was paying people um, a decent amount of pay and you was treating them fairly and you was doing all this that, you know, a company should do, then they, they wouldn't want to leave. They will honor the contract. They will go ahead and complete their one year and move on to somewhere else. But some of these conditions at these companies are worse than worse and people feel like that their backs are against the wall and they don't have a choice but to try to go find somewhere else to work um and you can't blame them for that you know um it, it's your job to get them in there and not only that is your job to uh keep them okay you know you have to have some sort of attention program. You just can't have all these people coming in the door and this expect you could treat them any kind of way and that, that they want to stay there and work for you. You know, they're not going to do it. You know, contract or no contract, they're not going to do it. Um, the fourth thing is the interference called, caused by a third party not to perform or make performance more burdensome than expensive, okay? So what they're saying is that when the company recruit the driver over to a new company, they was benefiting in some sort of way. And that's not necessarily the case because when you leave and you go to another company, they may have maybe a couple cents more or whatever the case may be, but they don't get their, a lot of times they don't get their tuition paid. A lot of times that, you know, um, they still going to have that burden of that tuition payment that they offer as far as tuition assistance. OK, so it's not actually a benefit. Actually, when people lose, I mean, when people leave from these companies that they have them under contract, they kind of lose in the situation. So it doesn't benefit them. It's not offering them any kind of benefit. They just feel like worst case scenario um, they would rather go to another company, get their experience and drive for them and be, uh, have that money on their credit report and all this kind of stuff instead of staying with them. So that should show what kind of company that you're dealing with. If somebody is really willing to just get five to $7,000 put on a credit report, because they don't want to stay. And when a person don't want to stay, you can't make them force them to stay. That contract is not going to keep them. Um, it, it's just not. Until you change the program and make it a better program for your drivers, they are going to walk away. A lot of companies don't have that issue. A lot of companies do have sponsored training programs that they do require people to, uh, drivers to stay there for a year. And most of them, if not you know, a majority of them do complete their uh, stay. 
of, of their 12 months. They do their contract. I'm one of those drivers. I went to KLLM. My contract was 12 months. Um, and I was able to be there and I felt like I was treated fairly within those 12 months to not even consider leaving until my contract was paid off. And that's because of the company that I chose. You know, so if you're willing and you want to be able to keep these drivers, you have to make some sort of effort on your part to uh, have better training environment. People will stay if you just treat them um, a certain way, you know, and it's not like you don't have the money. It's not like you can't do it. It's like it's, you don't want to do it. And until you take the initiative to uh, be able to say, hey, this is a problem. We're losing a lot of drive drivers. We're having a high turnover. Look at yourself first and say, hey, what can we do to make it better? What can we do to keep our drivers? If you care or you'll be dealing with a lawsuit since 2016 and now it's 2020 and you still ain't sold the case, okay? Now it's still going back down to the lower courts to make another decision, okay? Um, the fifth one, um, damage to CRST resulted. Um, CRST can claim that, you know, um, they lost revenue or whatever the case may be, uh, but it's still kind of hard that you damage because you benefit in a lot of ways. You benefit through your lower pay. You benefit. Um, you benefit in a lot of ways. So it's kind of hard. This battle, guys, is going to be happening for um, long period of times. You know, you would rather have a company that you could just take on drivers that already have a CDL and train them instead of having a school and putting them through school and bringing them through orientation and all this kind of stuff. It is costly. Okay. It's costly, but you always got to look at your numbers. You always got to be able to, um, to keep your drivers happy at the at the end of the day, if you don't find a way to keep drivers happy, they might come, but they ain't going to stay. If the name of the game is go get your license and leave, that's exactly what they're going to do. And they're not going to change that until um, you find a way to treat drivers better. If you care about your own company and your own program and you want to see it be more driver stand with you, change it, change it, make it that people want to stay. OK, that's a simple fix um, with the lawsuits and things like that. Lawsuits take forever to get a settlement. A lot of times you may not win because in the trucking industry, it is a it is so competitive. OK, it is very competitive and it it's very hard to prove that people are just targeting your company and your driver. OK, and that's really not the case. They just not happy where they're working at and they just want to leave and they will do anything that they have to do to do it. You know, I, I, I honestly feel that um, a driver should not um, be held captive in, 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 in bondage. Um, because of certain conditions, you know, um, there should be, you should look at the situation and try to improve upon it and make it different. And maybe more drivers will stay with you because they are just looking for an opportunity, um, to get their foot in the door and they deserve to have a decent pay that at the end of the day, you know, or you'll be suing everybody uh, and wasting a lot of money on attorney fees and all that kind of stuff. Um, when you can easily change your program. That's the way I feel about it. Um, the district court ruled that CRST, uh, they did prove two of the criterias, okay? They, but they did not have, pro, they did not provide evidence to support the uh, ca uh, causation elements. Okay. So they did prove something, but not everything. Okay. Uh, so it's going back down to the lower courts and may have them make a decision. At the end of the day, instead of putting your money in attorney fees and suing and all this kind of stuff, um, 
put your money in your drivers and making it a better program for them that they will want to stay and not want to lose you. You know, make it hard for them to to, to leave because that contract is not going to make it hard for them to leave. They're going to be out the door and somebody is going to hire them. OK, and it will be five years from now before you will uh, get any kind of settlement uh, from that, if anything. Um other than that, uh, just as I said, argues proof of trans am uh, motive. Uh, they're just saying that they they really just don't have a motive to. Um, 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 they just don't have a motive to just go go after and target CRST drivers. You know, their motive is to hire drivers. Period. And if they so happen to come from there, I mean they didn't just target them directly. They targeting drivers who qualify for uh, the requirements that they have to hire them. Um, and if they qualify for those requirements, which is to have a CDL, which is to graduate from a school or whatever the case may be and not have this and that on their records, then they're going to hire them. You know, uh, if your driver don't want to stay, you don't want no company to hire him. So you just want them to have a CDL and just sit at the house to win. When when are they able to get a job? When will they be able to work for somebody else? They don't want to work for you. OK, they don't want to work for you. They said, forget the contract. They, I mean, it wasn't what it what you said it was. It's not negotiable. They don't have the opportunity to negotiate that contract. So. Uh, it's one sided um, and they spoken up, probably told you about the issues and concerns that they was having with the company and there was nothing done. So you just want to blackball them from the industry, not let them get any type of job because they do not want to be with you. For how long? Should it be three months, six months, a year or forever? Would you like them to get their CDL and just not ever work for anybody else because they did not fulfill the contract for you? It, it, it will never happen like that, okay? Um, as long as people uh, don't have uh, tickets, accidents, and things like that on their record, and they have a clean record, and they have a CDL, somebody is going to hire them, okay? Understand that. You're fighting the wrong people. You need to be fighting yourselves and figure out a way on how to retain your drivers. How about that? Other companies have done that. And they have been very successful in doing that. You may want to talk to them and ask them, hey, guys, how is it that you're able to have a high retention rate from people that complete the program at school? Talk to your friend uh, Prime. Prime could keep that. It's very hard. Let me tell you something, CRSC. It is very hard for you to get a Prime uh, driver that has completed their CDL to go anywhere. Why? Because number one, they have one of the highest paid training programs out there. Okay. Drivers ain't getting 10 cents a mile. They getting out there, they working, they being employees, they train it is a long, um, they, their training is a long time. They're able to keep drivers there for train for months. OK, so talk to your friend, call up Prime, say, look, how y'all able to keep all them drivers over there with you all for to complete their one year or their uh, contract? You know, I'm sure that they will be able to give you some tips, you know, of what they do. And uh, it may be able to help you out and you won't have to sue other companies because they're leaving you. OK. Um, who else? Talk to Swift. Swift is very high at retaining a lot of their drivers um, as far as getting uh, through the training program and staying for a year. You know, just talk to some of your peers, some of the people that have companies that have schools and they don't have this issue and they're not running around suing everybody because they're salty because they losing drivers every day because they don't want to stay with them because they're being so mistreated that they just got to leave. Talk to them. OK, 
All right. What's going to happen with this case, guys? I don't know. But right now, as it stands, it's going back to the lower courts. OK, it is going back to the uh, lower courts and they're going to handle it there. But, you know, that is my opinion on what I think about the whole situation. If you would like to look up the case yourself, you could always do that. Subscribe to Land Life Landline News now, and it will let you know about all the cases in the transportation industry. Uh, can you help a student who wants to leave uh, CRST? Only... Uh, on camera, uh-uh. <laughs> Call me, okay? I'm sure there's some other opportunities out there for you guys. Goodness gracious. I would hate for anybody to leave home and not get paid for four weeks and have bills and children and uh, a family to feed and all that kind of stuff. And then after they get their CDL, they get 12 cents a mile. Somebody said they check was a hundred dollars. What is that fair? Is that is that what they signed up for? That's not right. You gonna be mad because another company wants to give them an opportunity to make some more money and, and, and maybe be a little successful so they could pay their bills at home. Okay. Uh, other than that, you guys, you have any questions for me? Byron, recently doing my DOT physical, I asked to name colors outside the exam room. I don't even understand what that is about. Uh, oh, Vincent said, I need to call him. Call me when you get done. Uh, at the end of the day, we all out here to make the most possible. That's what I'm talking about. Go to the highest bidder. You know what I'm saying? If, if somebody is paying you 20 cent a mile and then you turn around and you got the same requirements and they offer you 42 cent a mile, you know, that ain't too much that you got to think about. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Well, now the questions, but I just saw that little tidbit. Um, I just saw that little tidbit in the news. You know, I get these little articles and things, and I, I thought that uh, they call it poaching, poaching the drivers, you know. But you deal with that all the time, you know. Um, only thing that you could do, just like any anything, you know, it's competition out here, um, and everybody's up for grabs, and everybody needs drivers. Everybody's looking for good drivers and things like that. So you got to step up your game. Guys, let me tell you something. If you're not making money at the company that you are and you got a good record with nothing on your license, no tickets, no accidents, no felonies, no nothing, okay? Call them and say you're going to leave and see what happens. Okay, I don't have, I don't know how many uh, uh, drivers called me this week and I said, have you talked to your DM? Have you told them that you was going to put in a two week notice? Do you got anything on your record? They like, no, Miss Diva, I ain't got nothing. My record is clean. I've been here two years. I ain't had a raise or nothing. And I'm out here sitting in the middle of Texas somewhere. And, 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 and I look at my check and my check for $100. I say, baby, call them and tell them you put your two weeks notice in. See what happened. See what happened. See if you'll get a call back and say, well, um, I think that we can offer you about three cent more. Why you couldn't get that before? That's what I'm saying. Go ahead. Remember your worth. Know how valuable you are. You made a sacrifice to come out here into this industry. And all you ask is to make a decent living, have a decent pay, and be able to provide for your family and pay your bills. Okay? We're not out here millionaires. We're not millionaires by no means necessary at all. 
So you out here, you done proven yourself, you done got your experience, you got a year under that seat, and uh and 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 you call your uh, and you say, look, I ain't got nothing on me. Everybody wants you, okay? Don't think that you can't go nobody nowhere else. You got two years, you got no no incident, no tickets, no nothing on your record. Call them, call them, say, look, I'm going to have to turn this truck in, in in about two weeks, okay? See if somebody don't give you a call back and say, look, I can give you three more cents. How you like that? Call them and see. Call them blind. Know what you worth, okay? Know what you worth. At the end of the day, guys, you are the one that's out there running these loads. You are the one that is pushing uh, through um, uh, this pandemic, y'all have been out there running, making sure that these stores are filled, doing your part um, and, and everything. You deserve to have a decent pay. OK, a lot of these companies, um, a lot of these companies benefited on your behalf because they was eligible for the PPP loan program that they can get all this money to make their payroll and don't have to pay it back. And I bet you a lot of drivers did not see that money. OK, I, I can almost bet you a lot of drivers did not see them any increase in their pay or to say thank you for uh, a stand or being out here um, and not getting being sick and still delivering your loads when um, all this was was going on. OK. You as an employee did not benefit, did not benefit may have not benefited at all. The only way that you could have benefited if you was a lease driver or you was an owner operator, okay? But as a company driver and you stay working throughout this whole pandemic and they applied for the loan and they got that money, it may not have been passed down to you. So know your work, understand there's over 300,000 driving companies out here, okay? If you have that experience, you have a clean record, uh, you don't have anything on your license, you deserve it, guys. You deserve it. You work hard for it, you know? Um, that's my encouragement for you, you know? Um, a lot of times we are so loyal to uh, companies and it's not that 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 is not returned to us. Go where you appreciate it. You know, because there are companies out here that will really ap appreciate you and they'll let you know it. I got a girl today. She went out to a company. She said, Miss Tamara, it wasn't no orientation. It wasn't no nothing. I, I got out there. They just put me in the truck and they, <laughs> they told me. They, they been calling me, checking on me every day, making sure that I'm all right and everything, making sure I was able to get to my uh, delivery and uh, my pickup and everything. She said, I, I ain't never had a company that just worried about me so much. I said, yup, yeah, they appreciate you. They appreciate you. Uh, other than that, did y'all have any questions for me or anything? I haven't done a live feed. I don't even know how it's holding up, but... I haven't done a, a live in a, a very, 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 very long time. Uh, anything about recruiting, anything about going to school, uh, this is a great time to get out there and get your license and get on the road and get your CDL. Um, I told you all that if you have a class B and you need to upgrade to a class A, just go out there and get your combination. Uh, take that test. Take that test to get your combination uh, um, and they will upgrade you to what is called a class A permit. And then you will be good to go to school and get your training. If you already got your license from another school or whatever the case may be, and you're out there just searching and searching and searching and everybody's turning you down. It's it's just that you're not applying to the right companies when you have your license and you don't have 
experience, there's only certain companies that will accept you. So um, when you're putting in those, you know, those little ads and putting in your information and you're like, oh, my God, why is 40 people calling me all at one time? It's because you put your information out there. The best thing that you could do is call somebody that already know where you can go. OK, I already know who want to accept you and who is not. OK, you can't go to bar none if you just got out of school. OK, so it will save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of phone calls. If you just know where it is that you can go to get your training. The good thing about going out and getting your CDL from a school that is not sponsored and you go to outside place, you're not under any contract. OK, you don't owe nobody nothing. You already did the job. You already went and got your license. OK, so that means that you're not under contract. You do have to stay with a company. I do encourage you to stay with a company. Tough it out for at least three months as a solo driver before you could go anywhere else. Um, if you do quit before your three months as a solo driver, you're going to have to go through training again at somebody else's company. Um no roommate, but a runner. Go ahead, Byron. They don't have nobody in the, uh, uh, some companies, they doing a uh, orientation online. You ain't even got to show up for orientation. You do everything online. And when you get to the uh, facility, they already got the truck waiting for you. You ain't got to meet nobody. You can do all the paperwork that you got to do online. OK, um, I got a lot of companies that's going to online, online orientation. OK, they got the truck ready for you. Get in the truck and uh, go to run, run loads. Um, but uh, yeah, how y'all doing as far as the coronavirus and everything going on? Guys, I just received about 501 boxes, um, a mask, sanitizer, all that kind of stuff. So I will be making my way around on the off days, on the weekends to make sure that I stop at the truck stops and give you that uh, kind of stuff to make sure that y'all are uh, protecting yourselves and staying safe out there on the road. Uh, we did have a couple of incidents. Well, not incidents, but people, drivers are catching the, um, the coronavirus. And, um, you know, they having to take be at home and take care of family or they're going through it themselves. So this is real. You know, it's affecting us. So we always got to be careful, always got to mask up. Um, I haven't been out the house in a minute because um, right now I'm in Mississippi and Mississippi is on the list for the uh, highest case uh, record in the state. I mean, in the country. So we're like in a red zone right now. It's very serious. You cannot walk out your door or uh, go to any type of establishment without having uh, a mask. Um, it, all the casinos, you must wear a mask to go into, into the casino. So um, it's, it's very, it's very uh, strict um, around here. Um, any of your companies, I, when I have my eyes set on Prime, hopefully this color blindness doesn't affect anything. I'm in good health, drug free, can pass a, a background check and good job. Well, you're good to go. You got everything they're looking for. OK, you be prime candidate. OK, you got all that going on for you. You exactly what you're looking for, what they looking for. Any of your companies hiring out of South Florida, three months experience. Yes. When you have experience, um, 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 you can get a job out of uh, South Florida. Uh, the biggest problem that I have with Florida is that um, I don't. Uh, there's not a lot of companies that want to hire Florida for students, for people that's going to school to get their, C, their CDL. One company is CRST, baby. They will hire you all day. OK, you coming from Florida, way down there in Florida. CRST is a place that they could, they'll get you. They got school right there in Jacksonville. OK, um, if you got to get it. Um, uh, but yeah, F uh, Florida is a very... A uh, hard place to hire from. Um, a lot of companies don't run freight uh, past Orlando. So it's hard to be able to get you home and hard to be able to get freight 
um, out of there, coming out of there. Now, you can get with companies that run freight in Florida. There's a lot of trucking companies that run freight freight in Florida, but it's just kind of hard to get you home if you way down in and uh, and uh, Lake. Uh, what is that place? Uh, 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 Miami down there in that area, you know, um, they don't like to go uh, past Florida. So yes, it is kind of difficult to get you if you don't have a license or you have a license and no training. Uh, any uh, Mississippi, Florida, California, all in the red zone. Yes, Texas. Yes, indeed, they sure are. You know, so I'm I'm staying inside. Um, um, let me see. CRSC sent me straight to the mountains on my first load with a trainer who had only, oh, and that's another thing. You talking about trainer, trainer. <laughs> Six months experience, you got on a truck with somebody else. I, I guess they figured, you know, two people in the truck to figure it out better than one, you know? And they got two, two heads are always better than one. That's the, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, uh, mental. That's the uh, mentality, I guess, of the thinking. Go to CR, CR England. It'd be three of y'all in the truck, okay? If y'all, if you can't figure it out with three people, I don't know what to tell you. You know, one can get out front, one can get out back and help you in the spot or whatever it is that you need to do. Um, uh, but yeah, two, two is better than one. That's the motto, okay? Uh, uh, y'all figure it out together. What's wrong with that? Teamwork make the dream work, okay? Um, but yeah, you you gonna have people that just finished school. They gonna be training you. They they know a little bit more than you. You just coming in. They done been there two weeks. They already got some information. You know what I'm saying? You can't be picky, okay? No, have mercy. Y'all trying to be picky with the people, okay? You got one month. I just came in. You you know a little bit more than me, right? There you go. Um. But uh, yeah, it, it really is. It's a good time to get in the industry. It's a it's a good time to um, to uh, do what you got to do, especially with your training, especially it being July and so hot and everything like that. Um, you can get that training out the way and be ready for uh, winter driving. Um, a lot of people ask, who is the best company to drive for asking for my son? The best company to drive for is the one that will get you a CDL. Um, I, I really don't like to say uh, companies the best company um, because they all have their different training um, um, aspects. If you don't like to be by yourself, go to CRST, go to CRN because you're definitely going to be with somebody. OK, if you are intimidated and you don't think that you could drive that truck down the highway by yourself and you need somebody to, you know, hold your hand. CRST, CR England will definitely do that for you. Um, if you are somebody that is looking for a dedicated account or a regional account and you too much don't want to do the OTR after you get finished training, I would recommend you go to um, SWIFT. I would recommend you go to a company <clears throat> that has a lot of dedicated accounts, okay? Such as Target, such as Walmart, such as, you know, they got accounts, they got customers. So a lot of those customers, you just go out and back, such as Hershey, you know, um, the big mega companies have those accounts. You may look at CR England or Swift or whatever, and you're like, I don't really want to go there. But if it gets you home every day, you know, that might be an option for you. Um, they do have those accounts, U.S. Express. They have the uh, uh, Walmarts. They have the Targets. They have the, the dedicated. They have stuff like that. So that's why you will look at those companies as well, because they can offer you um, dedicated, regional, and maybe, you know, home uh, every day or every other day um, with, a, uh, with a mega carrier. The thing about it is with those jobs, a lot of people want to be home. A lot of people uh, don't want to go over the road. So there may be a, um, 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 a waiting list for those jobs. Um, so that's, that's the thing. Um, how old is too old? Child, uh, ain't no age. I mean, you know, uh, it's not really. Uh, but companies do look at your age, you know. Um, when you get up there and, uh, and it's, it's not supposed to be age discrimination, 
But to be honest with you, they do. When they see you 70 something years old or whatever the case may be, it's going to be difficult because if they don't get you one way, they're going to get you another. They're going to get you with that physical. They're going to get you with medical stuff. They going to get it's not going to be easy like anybody else just going to take that, you know, physical. They're going to put you through something. And if they can't get you on the medical part of it, they're going to get you in training. Okay? So when you ask is there age limit, it's not. They're not allowed to discriminate, but people come up with ways. And uh, you will obviously feel that if you are up into your late 60s or 70s or anything like that, it, it will be very difficult. Um, and I, I don't know if it's for insurance purposes or whatever the case may be, but they're not going to openly say that. You will feel it. Okay. Um, TMC is the best for flatbed. I don't know a lot about TMC. A lot of people like it. Some people don't. Um, I, I don't, I know they got some nice Peterbilts, child. Some of them folks, well, I guess they can ride for free in them brand new Peterbilts, huh? Because they look so good going down the road. Some people don't care about money, you know? They just care about looking good going down the road, Okay. And, um, but no, I don't know how much TMZ make, I, I mean, TMZ, TMC make, um, they do have a program. I do think that there's, I, I, um, I heard that they were strict. I don't know. Um, you got to be good on your P's and Q's, uh, going with them. Um, but, uh, uh, but they got nice trucks. If you want to look good going down the highway, there you go. But there's other companies. There's PS, PNS. There's Jordan um, Flatbed. There's uh, um, who's the company that I got? There's LCT London. There's uh, uh, Trans United. You know, there's a lot of companies that's out there that have flatbed that do pay really good money good money. Guys, stop looking at all the popular companies, okay? There are some not so popular companies out there that really uh, pay good money uh, in flatbed and things like that, okay? Search for those companies. Search for some heavy haul, oversized, step deck, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to get in it, get in it. You know, get in it. Two feet deep. Let's go. Make that money. Um, what up with US Express? Training? No. Ah! I would say U.S. Express is a big company. They got a lot of dedicated accounts. They got a, a lease deal that you can finish in two years. You know, so they have a lot of options. At one time, they was offering like $25,000 to come hang out with them. I could come hang out with you for $25,000, you know? I could come work for you for about $25,000, you know? Um, they have a lot of great uh, incentives, uh, that they do. Um, some people like it. You know, it's a toss up. Uh, some people like it. Some people don't just like any other company. Uh, I don't have no way or whatever. Uh, I heard U.S. Express lost a target account to CRN. I don't know. I don't pay attention um, to uh, accounts being lost because I'm not actually at, you know, their companies or whatever. Um, but it could happen. People lose accounts all the time. You know, if the money ain't right, they ain't finna, you know, they ain't finna do it. If the contract up and you ain't coming to the table with the right account of money, or if the drivers are being late on the low and they tired of it, you know, they switch it up. You know, they might want a little something cheaper. I don't know what they offer, but um, but um, could be possibility. What is the best freight brokerage school? <sighs> I don't even know. I like, I can tell you who I like. Um, I like uh, Scott Woods. I like the American um, broker. I think it's the American broker something. Um, I like a lot of people that give you a lot of free information on YouTube for nothing. You know, if you, you, if you could piece it all together on YouTube, baby, you could get the information. You could get it, honey. So uh, uh, when you ask me uh, what is the best freight broker school, YouTube. YouTube, because on YouTube, they ain't going to tell you no more in the class than what they do on the screen, okay? A lot of them. And uh, one of the uh, oldest freight brokerages out here, the one that's been doing it the longest, I mean, you got to give respect where respect is due. And that goes, to, uh, to me, that goes to Scott Woods. There ain't nobody that breaks it down better than him. And when I tell you, he teaches you how to not only be an agent, but that man teaches you how to be a broker for real, like for real, for real.
Like not like with a company, not with like, you know, you going to an agency or nothing. No, he breaks it down to you, gives you all the paperwork that you need to be a independent broker from scratch, from getting it out the mud. And that stuff is so confusing as I don't know what. So if you don't know what you're doing, baby, it's going to be, it's going to be confusing to you. It's going to be a lot of paperwork that you don't know nothing about. And you got to piece that stuff together. Is it worth it? I think so. Cause he gives you everything. Okay. He gives you every, his stuff is so in detail. It, it, he walks you from step A to step Z. He give you every step that he could possibly give you. Um, the problem that you're going to run into is when you get ready to go get that insurance. Okay. When you get ready to go qualify for that $75,000, uh, bond that you have to uh, qualify for that right there might stop you in your tracks. Okay. Because if your credit ain't good, all right. If your credit ain't good, you're going to have to come up with a down payment. <laughs> okay. And that payment can be healthy. And not only that, your payment per month can be healthy. So if it's taking you a while to get your shippers, right? If it's taking you a while to get your customers and everything set up and all that, then you got to get a factoring company. Then you got to find your shippers and all this kind of stuff. If it's taking you a while, the payments going to start kicking in. So you got to go in it. Um, you got to go in it to, 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 to really grind it out, to do that. Um, if I, if I was to give you any suggestion, um, I would start off from the ground up, baby. I would go into somebody, I would work as an agent and just pound the payment, uh, collect your book of business, uh, make you some money, uh, stack that money. And then once you get a million dollars worth of business that you're able to handle, then go out and um, get your own brokerage. Um, so many people are in a rush to uh, go get their brokerage because they want to be called a broker. OK. And within their first year, they automatically turn into a dispatcher because <laughs> the bill's going to kick your butt. I'm telling you for real. It's going to kick your butt, okay? Um, but you can find a lot of information that you really want to know um, um, on YouTube. And that's for real. That's for real. Um, I'm not one of those people that is going to not tell you who's good or whatever. But I do know for a fact that uh, Scott Woods has earned his wings when it comes to the freight brokerage, okay? Hands down. That man knows his business. Um, I don't know how much he charged. I don't know how much he costs. But if you don't know anything about freight brokering, anything like that, he will break everything down into detail. To It is so overwhelming. You don't know what you want to do. <laughs> uh, let me see. Flatbed, Florida, Cypress, Jackson. Uh, Flatbed Company in Florida. Is that what you want me to look at? Uh, call me 800-620-9235. Uh, I just attended school with 21 through way up in it. Uh, oh, okay. You replied to so only 57, but had high line. You got to get that BP down now. Nah. You know, you don't want to go up in there. They don't give you a three month card and a six month card and all that kind of stuff. That stuff is aggravating. Go on and get them pills before you uh, 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 do what you got to do to get that blood pressure down or get on your medication or whatever the case may be. You don't want to go up in there getting that high blood pressure and they put you on a three month uh, medical hold and all that kind of stuff. Go for the gusto, go for that two year card. Um, but they probably will put you on a year card if you're on medication. Uh, let's see, so coming out of South Florida, you recommend finishing CRST? Y'all grind it out, it ain't but 12 months. I don't, rec I don't recommend y'all jump ship but I understand, okay? I don't I don't recommend that you leave any company. I don't recommend that you just go get your CDL and, and buck up out of there on the next Greyhound. No, I don't recommend that. You know, I recommend that you grind it out. I recommend that you do the work. You know, greater come later, okay? You know, you got to start from the ground, work your way up. I understand that y'all got bills and some of y'all can't do it like that. But if you ask me what I suggest, Stay with that company for a year. You know, they gave you the opportunity. Uh, a lot of people go to CRST and uh, they can't get it nowhere else. 
Okay, CRST gives them an opportunity that if you're a felon, if uh, uh, you know, a lot of opportunities out there that the normal person will not be able to go to school, they'll keep getting their uh, the doors closed in their face time and time after again. And I don't, I don't go nowhere you ain't wanted. OK, if they don't want you, don't go there. Go to the place that's going to open the door for you and give you the opportunity. OK, and out of respect, just give them they 12 months. It ain't going to kill you. It's going to go by so fast before I even realized that my contract was up. That 12, I was out there just running so hard. I didn't even realize the 12 months. Shoot, I was in training for two months. All I had to do was eight months. Go on and knock that contract out. Don't have, don't, don't, don't sit up there and get that on your credit report and all that kind of stuff. You don't want them kind of bills. You don't want them harassing you for that kind of stuff. They gave you the opportunity. They got you a bus ticket. They gave you a place uh, to stay. You know, gave you some money to get your training. Get your training done. Knock the twelve months out and be out and be out. Peace. You did your obligation. You know, you, you knocked it out. You did it. There's opportunities out here. You're you going to be able to go after the money. The money out there, it ain't going nowhere. Okay? Do your 12 months. So, no, I don't recommend that you leave any company that has you under contract um, uh, right after you get your CDL. Out of respect, um, they gave you the opportunity to go and um, just go get your license, knock it out. Okay? Now, if you're being harassed, uh, if you're being discriminated against, uh, if you're being sexually assaulted, now that's an issue. Now that's a problem. I would recommend that you stay there. I recommend that you speak up. I recommend that you make a report and I recommend that you follow up with it. OK, um, now that is one reason to definitely get up out of there. If they discriminate against you, if they harass you. Uh, 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 especially if it's sexual harassment with trainers or anything like that. No, I do not recommend you stay there. I recommend you pack all your stuff and get up out of there. Okay. Um, ASAP. Okay. You don't want to talk about it. You don't need to work it out. None of that kind of stuff. Cause there should be policies in place that that should not be happening to you. Okay. Um, let's see. So coming out, uh, finishing the contract. Okay, I'll answer that. Bottom line, we are all grateful for you. Oh, thank you, line. I try. Uh, how about KLLL? Shelly, you know KLLM, my stomping ground, you know? Girl, you know I love me some KLLM. Girl, you couldn't tell me that when I was over there making that 88 cent a mile, child. And I was calling myself a, 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 a owner operator on 88 cent a mile, girl. And I had a brand new truck, automatic. Baby, I used to take that truck everywhere. I was at the gro grocery store. I was at the mall. That was my new vehicle because nobody ever gave me a $165,000 brand new vehicle and gave me the keys to it and said I can do what I want. OK, girl, I thought I was large and in charge. OK, I, I ride up big time. OK, you got your Lexus, you got your BMW, you got your Mercedes Benz. Baby, I had a 2014 uh, Freightliner, 165,000. There you go. OK, girl, I love me some KLLM, baby. Them folks know they took care of me. I, I, I don't have nothing. And it was just a family environment, and those drivers really looked out after you. Like even if you was on the road or whatever the case may be, they looked out. They looked out after you. You know, you felt like you was something at KL. At least I did. I ain't been nowhere else, so I felt like you know you go up to the drivers' lounge, you go up in there, folks playing cards, dominoes. You got shower, they feed and cooking and going on. Girl, that was home. Okay, that was home. I loved it at some KLLM. Girl, um, and then you got to be a trainer after you've been there a year and no accidents and they put somebody else on the truck with you. Girl, you making double the money. You just riding around, enjoying yourself. Everybody happy. You know what I'm saying? And then they knew that that truck payment was due. Let me tell you something. You took off. Uh, KLL come, KLL come calling. They be like, you know that truck payment, dude. Come on now, let's run to Texas and go and get you a load. Got your load going to California, girl. They may show you had a load going out somewhere to pay them fixed expenses. Okay, 
They may show you had a little Jackson to California, Fontana, go run it, run it, drop it. Okay, let's get some money in, in, the, pay, in the bank. For thir- and then you ran your load from Friday to Thursday, right? And on Thursday, you got your check. Girl, the, I think the, the time, the cutoff time was Thursday morning and Thursday evening. Whatever you ran from that time was on your settlement check. And then they were giving away $3,000 referral bonus. Child, ain't no way you couldn't make no money over there, y'all. You getting three, you getting three thousand, four thousand dollars with a trainee and three thousand dollars for a for, of a referral on your. They, I think they split it up in two checks or something. But on your first or your second check, you had three thousand dollars, three thousand more dollars. Child, I, I, I don't have nothing bad to say about KLLM. Okay, nothing. Can't tell you about nowhere else, but I can tell you about KLLM. Um. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Just uh, what else? Uh, it is Cypher's Truck is a starter company out of Jacksonville. Is it? You telling me that? Do they have a school? I never heard of Cypher's Truck um, out of Jacksonville. I've been looking for some places out of uh, Florida because I just don't know where to send. Just came on. What about Western Express? Girl, Western Express. <laughs> uh-huh. Let me get myself together. Western Express is a company that will give you an opportunity if you got out here and messed up. They will give you an opportunity. I'll have nothing to say negative about Western Express because, baby, when you can't get hired nowhere else, them folks will give you a job. Stay there. Get whatever you got off of your record. Keep it moving. I, I, I can't hate on no company that's gonna give you an opportunity. I can't hate on no com- I can't hate on no company that everybody else closed the door, but they open the door for you and ask you when you come to orientation. I can't hate on that. You know, because it's all about keeping it moving. I'm not gonna sit up there and down a company or or or, 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 or say they ain't about nothing or whatever the case may be, because baby, they don't open a lot of doors for people. Okay, they don't open a lot of doors for people. So if that's a company that uh, you you need to go to or you have to go to or whatever the case may be, go knock it out, make your money. You know, you don't have to stay there. Ain't nobody got no uh, prison bars on there, you know, but if that's somewhere you got to go, they give you the opportunity. Uh, let me see. What? Good afternoon. What about Mercer Transportation? Just took my truck there. Um, Mercer, I guess it's kind of good. I don't have any firsthand experience with Mercer, but most of the drivers that I've talked to, it's up and down. Um, some people, you know, get on dedicated accounts and they're able to uh, make it work. Uh, a lot of people like Mercer. They are on the operator type company, I think. And uh, you can make some good money there. People make some good money there. So I don't have anything negative to say about Mercer. If they, if you're making money over there, go over there. You know, um, you know they they got drivers. Some drivers are running. They got, a, I think they got a little low board or something. But I don't have a lot of information on uh, Mercer. They're not one of my companies. But uh, I do have uh, Facebook friends that work for Mercer, and, and they love it. You know, they have their ups and downs just like anybody else. Do KLLM have a driver's school? Rose, girl, do they? Child, but everybody can't go to KLLM. I don't know if it's this light that's hot. Uh, everybody can't go to KLLM. Number one, um, you got to be in, if you're going to Jackson, you got to live in Mississippi. I think they started taking uh, Louisiana and they started taking uh, um, um, maybe India. I'm not sure, but you have to call them. But when I was there, you you had to live in um, Mississippi in order to go to KLL and Jackson. You had to live in Texas in order to go to the one in in uh, of course uh, Dallas. Um, you had to live. Atlanta don't have a school, and then they got that one up there in Chicago where they got. I like KLL because it was attached to a college. Girl, it ain't nothing like going to CDL school through a college. Okay. Um, you was in nice, uh, you was in a nice classroom, air conditioning, you know what I'm saying? Everything was brand new, you know? Um, 
they spoiled you at that. You go from C.I. Ingham to the KLL, baby, you gonna, you gonna know a whole lot of different. The drive was laid back. We would go out there on the training field, uh, on them back roads in Mississippi. You have been on the back roads in Mississippi, them two lane highways and a 53 foot truck. Girl, you better get your life. Ain't no sidewalks or nothing. Get your life. Get your life. Um, but they had good trainers, man. Them folks, they hustled. They, they, them, them trainers, them instructors, they cared about you. You know, they, they, they was like, they, they really, cared. and they got on you if you wasn't doing the right thing. I mean, it was like Mississippi is the South. You know, everybody laid back, and you, you we talk funny. You know, we, 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 we Southern. You know, uh, we eat good. You know, uh, let me see. Uh, what are your top Three Southeast companies for 12 month experience. Let's go. One preventable, not on the MVR, Florida residents. Ooh, that's going to be hard. What is your top three East companies for 12 months experience? One preventable, not on the MVR, Florida resident, Florida, Florida. Hold on. Let me see. One second. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. I like uh, uh, who I like, who I like. Let me see. I can tell you real quick. Hold on. I got so good with this child. I can tell you with my eyes closed. Florida, one year. And you want, uh, let's see, regional. And you want company driver. And who we got? Baby. Who we got? Who I like? Who I like? Epps. Epps going to always come on. Estes, I want to, I want to, uh, I like Estes, but you got to do a lot of stuff. You got to get doubles and triples. You got to have hazmat. You got to do a lot of stuff for Estes. Um, U.S. Express, Western Flyer. West, I love Western Flyer. Western Flyer. Them, them W9s, Western Flyer. But they strict. F strict. Western Flyer strict. Um, I think, but everybody give you like one little thing. One little, one little thing. I love CFI. Child, you can't tell me nothing about CFI. I love that company. Huh? Now, I don't have no complaints about no CFI. I try to pull. You ready to go? You done did your year, baby. Ain't you ready to move on? No, Miss Tamara, uh-uh. I'm, I'm going to hang on in there. I'm going to stay there. I said, God, me, I can't even get nobody from CFI. Uh, let me see. Mm, nothing on my record or close to homes. Cause on, yeah, usually uh, the best thing that you can get uh, also is, you know, every week home or whatever the case may be, them locals. But uh, sometimes I do have some locals. You got two, you got over a year, two years experience. Maybe them locals be popping up, but they be catching them. Uh, J.B. Hunt in the moto. Y'all need to do that. Chicago, get on that. Uh, Atlanta in the moto. Okay, get on that. Home every day, every other day. Um. Uh. Uh. There's a lot of things I like. Cardinal. Um. Uh, Cardinal down there, in Memphis, South Haven. You know, that's a lit every day, every other day. So there's a lot of uh places. Sometimes they want you to do. Um. Sometimes they want you to do, um, um, a little driver assist. But you know, hey, y'all young people, y'all can handle that. Um, or push it to the back. I don't know what push it to the back mean. If I got to get on the back of the truck, that's a little bit too much. Um, what's up with the dispatch company? Dispatch company is on the website. The website is actually um, not uh, completed right now. I got a developer that's working on a back end, so you don't see the changes. He won't be through with it until the 21st. So what he's doing is putting my PayPal and my Stripe account connecting that to all uh, the products and um and all that kind of stuff so people can pay with paypal and they can pay with stripe and they can pay with whatever they want to pay so um um it's it's actually i love it um because it's it's revamped and uh, uh the cdl job applications uh, that whole thing is on the front page. We moved the shopping thing to the second page. Then on the third page, I got the dispatch uh, option. And then on the fourth page, we got something else going on. I'm doing author the authorities, the the uh, LLCs, the uh, getting your business up. That's going to be a charge. Um, so it's coming together. 
But this man, uh, he's taking his time. Um, so uh, is KLL a good? Y'all, y'all be on that KLL, don't you? I don't tell y'all, I don't know how many times. I don't did, I don't know how many videos. Letting y'all know how much I got love for KLL. And y'all still ask me to today. Six years later, ask me, is KLL good, child? Woo! I don't know if I'll be here today. Um, what company I can go to with my permit? Need more training on my 90 and offset. Uh, with your permit, shoot, you go CRST, CRA, Swift, you go to PAM, you go to uh, CFI, you can go US Express, you go to uh, uh, Prime, you go, boy, boy, what's that company? Uh, tell me, get off the internet, huh? Um, you go to war, you go, every, everybody that got training, you go. Uh, if you're in the area, okay, you got to be in a certain area. Um, did you just mention Epson? I'm considering this company. What's your opinion? Well, Anthony, you know, we can talk about it. If you're trying to go to Epson, we can talk about it. I can give you my opinion. We can break it down to you. You got to call me now. Y'all be telling y'all this and y'all go, y'all go right past me. Okay, call me. I'll break it all down to you. Uh, learn from you. Uh, you may have already answered this. Has COVID affected the trucking industry a lot, in your opinion? Yes, it, it has. Uh, we doing a whole lot. We doing everything a lot differently. Like, you know, I'm, the biggest thing I miss is like, we, we don't have that fellowship no more. We don't have... We don't, we, you know, it's like hi and by now. I mean, you don't even say hi. You can't even get close to drivers no more, you know? I mean, our drive was already lonely enough out there on the road, um, uh, being out there away from your family and all that kind of stuff. And now you get out here to the truck stops, uh, to the shippers, to the receivers. You can't even stand close to each other. You got to wear a mask. And I don't know about y'all. I don't know if y'all ever tried to uh, 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 have a mask on in 103 degree weather. Child, you ain't trying to talk to nobody. Can't nobody hear you through the mask. It had really uh, taken a toll on, on all of us. Then you got to worry about protesting and people uh, uh, doing things to your truck. I mean, it's just crazy. Our whole world, everything that we were so used to doing, uh, the truck shows is gone. All that is done. Y'all, Guess what? I, did I tell y'all I got um, the 2012 Blazer Award, okay? So I will be in Las Vegas receiving an award uh, with the Real Women in Trucking. Um, I'm so excited for that, you guys. I mean, only being in the industry for six years and to be able to get a 2021 of um, uh, the Trailblazer Awards is like, I mean, I was just happy being nominated. And I did not even ex 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 expect that because there's so many women that have been in this industry and have done so much uh, way more than what I've done. OK. And um, even the other lady that uh, uh, got it as well, Miss Deb, Miss Deb Dingo, she got the Trailblazer Award. This lady is uh, has her own authority. She's had trucks. She's been in the industry for a long time. And if you ever get to meet Deb, she is so great to talk to. You would just want to listen to her accent because she's from Australia. And you would just want, and when she talks, you could just be like, you just, you don't want to, you don't want her to stop talking. You know, you just be asking a question so she could keep talking. Um, but she's been in the industry for such a long period of time and has so much um, um, information and, and guidance and things like that. And just to be honored in the same presence as her is like crazy. Um, you and uh, uh, I've been in the U.S. for 14 years now and been driving for 27 years. I have, I should have gotten my own truck years ago. Timothy, it ain't never too late. It ain't never too late. You can always get your truck. They sell them every day. You you can always get your truck, okay? Um, and probably can get it with no money down with 27 years in the industry, okay? Um, what company is good to lease on with? Um, the one that make you money? <laughs> Um, no, for real. I would say a uh, percentage. A lot of the times, if the rates are high, um, 
Um, it, it's it's just where uh, uh, you able to make a decent amount of money. You know, um, that's what I would say. Um, and sometimes it could be real good, and then sometimes it could be real bad. But you want to be able to lease on to a company that if something happens and it's not, you know, you know, it not it's not what it is, and it's putting you in a bind that you're owing money and you're not making money. You want to be in a program that you can move that truck at any time. Okay, um, it, it's very hard to pay them trucks off. And being obligated to those companies for five years, that's hard. Drivers, drivers, um, drivers, uh, they transfer from companies all the time. And to stay with a company for five years trying to make a truck payment, man, that is, the, that is one of the most um, hardest things that, that you, could, you could put yourself through, especially if you got a family, a house, and some bills. OK. Um, and um, the only way that uh, uh, I would ever do it again is if I would be able to get something from outside as far as a truck and then be able to choose who I want to lease. And a lot of times uh, these companies will have a, a list. OK, they will have a list like you buy your truck from an outside uh, company to uh, lease your truck with. Um, those companies will have a list of, of places that uh, they do not recommend that you go or that they do recommend that you go because they have seen people come in and buy trucks uh, with them and, um, and they're not making any money. So they make a list of those companies that are not suggested that you go to if you want to put a truck on because you got to look at your payments. And um, if you're not making enough money to make those payments and all that kind of stuff, um, don't go to them. Uh, let's see. I have tanker doubles, triples with a hazmat when stay open back up. I have tanker double, triples with a hazmat when stay open back up. Are uh, you good for Estes? Estes looking for you, Herbert. Herbert, you may not say that too loud. You got some good experience and, and nothing on your record. Folks going to be calling you, Herbert. They're going to blow your phone up. You got all that. They want you. Um, will uh, KLLM accept drivers with their own truck? Um, yes, uh, you can go to KLLM with your own truck. But if you do that, you want to go in on the logistics side. And that means that you need to have your own authority and your own MC number. And you have to have your authority for at least 180 days to sign on with KLLM in your own truck. OK, um, you will be handled on the logistics side. So you'll be able to see how much they lose pay and uh, where they're going and pick loads from there. But if you do not have your own authority and uh, you just want to take your truck to KLLM, um, last time I checked, I haven't been there in four years, but they don't pay you no more than the lease driver that already got a lease truck there. So if it's a dollar a mile plus a fuel surcharge, that might not be beneficial to you as an owner operator. OK, um, are there any companies that will train, though, I have a minor a minor condition? that my physician is opposed to repairing, but she's willing to give a certified medical letter that I'm um, fit for duty. If you could get a, a DOT uh, uh, doctor to uh, issue you a card, then uh, you should be good to go because they don't have the say, you know? Um, Western Express fat bed off of 67% of the load and lease 80 when you pay off your truck. Now that's good. 85% of the load, you can't be that. You know, Western has its, its positives. You know, it's not all bad because if you, uh, if, if it was, nobody would be working for them. So somebody got to be making some money over there, you know. Um, so it's not all bad. I don't know a lot about them. I can't, you know, tell you a lot, but. I do know that they will open their doors when other people will not. Okay. Um, drop your number, 800. Y'all know my number, Herbert. You know it, 800 620 9235. Um, email Miss Diva Truck at gmail.com. Uh, any good owner op companies? Yes, there's a lot of them. Um, you could uh, uh, own an op. Own an op. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of owner op companies. That pay percentage. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of them. Just depending on how you want to run. 
what you want to do, where you want to go. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, but people that had their trucks paid off and everything like that, um, a lot of comp a lot of uh, people go with percentage. Um, my husband raised home four to six a weekly after fixed costs and four to six what? Can he, uh, four to six thousand after the fixed costs and fuel? Where you at, girl? Tell us. He bring home four to six. Is that his own truck? It gotta be his own. Is it his own truck? No, that's the Western Express truck. Girl, shut up. Don't you tell everybody that. They'll be over there. Your husband be bringing home two to three thousand. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's good. If he bring home four to six thousand uh after fixed costs and fuel and stuff like that, he must be doing flat bed. <laughs> he got to be doing flat bed. Um, Landstar is an owner op company, yes. Um, Landstar is a company that um, you could go over there and make 65% of the load, run their tra with their trailers. Uh, you run under their authority. They have a load board and, um, and, and you work with a broker and make your money. Um, uh, let's see. My husband brings home for the six. Landstar is on the op. Yes. Uh, last star uh, year left and receive approval for uh, another. Yes, for six thousand, girl, child. The lines are gonna be the lines are gonna be ringing off the hook tomorrow. Western Express, they on their way. Western Express, y'all, they on their way. They come and get that. Um, Western Express pays about seven a week for flatbed. After deductions, it's about four to six. That's what CRST do. CRST pay that much in flatbed? You think they don't in a lease program? Maybe they don't percentage, huh? Don't think, don't think, don't can nobody tell you that uh CRST don't make no money. Now the, the students might not make none. Okay. But them uh them on the ops over there with the lease dri drivers, uh flatbed, uh -huh, nah. try pulling them away from that. You might can get them students, but you sure ain't gonna get them flatbed drivers. <laughs> Cause they on percentage over there. They ain't playing, you know. Yeah, flatbed do good, you know. If that's your cup of tea, baby. As soon as they tell me I need to strap up some, <laughs> it's gonna be a wrap, girl. We ain't even making it out a ship, okay? They say, Miss Diva, can uh, you gonna have to strap that down? Put some chains on there, or something, tarp it up, or something, girl. It's gonna be over. With. I'm gonna have to quit right there. Gonna get abandonment all on my record. Yeah, CRST play that. Um, I didn't know that. Uh, you first person that spoke positive about CRST. I, I I don't have anything bad to say about any company because all uh, all companies have their uh, perks. They all they all have their specialty. You know, they all have their good and their bad. I don't care where you go. Everybody love Prime. Prime got bad stuff too, child. Um, um, um you, you just can't speak, you know, bad of, about everything um, because people work there, people making money. And obviously, if they making money, they ain't got a problem with it. So, you know, it just might not be your cup of tea. That's all. Uh, you know, students might be suffering over there a little bit, but the experienced drivers are, are, are making it happen. OK. Um, but, yeah, that's how I feel about it. You know, I mean, it's a business at the end of the day. And, um, you know, you just have to go and figure it out where you can uh, make your money and do good, you know. And if it ain't there, find somewhere else to go and, and make it happen. Eventually, you're going to find the right spot and stay there and grind it out. Other than that, y'all, I enjoy coming in, being able, y'all, this has been a stress believer, okay, to be able to come and, and join in with y'all and talk and have a conversation. I'm telling you, I needed this, okay? When you sitting in this house all day, talking on the phone from, y'all, I've been up since six o'clock this morning. First one to log on. First one calling. I'd be scared I'm calling people too early in the morning, but child, I can't wait. I'll be on, hey, this is Terry. Hey, how you doing, baby? I'm just calling to check and see you looking for anything to read you. I see you done putting a little something. Come on over here to, you know, child, this thing right here do not drop until five o'clock. Okay, so it's just such a relief to be able to uh, come in and just talk to y'all again and and let go and all that kind of stuff. But 
it's 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 rough. It's rough. Look at if I could show y'all Ripley right now, y'all would die laughing. Okay, because this child over here is in a recliner seat with his feet up, like he the king of everything. Um, let me see. How's Western Express driving? I don't know. You're like, post a not over. Oh, they do they pay percentage? Uh, Carlos asked, do they pay who? Western Express? I think Western Express pay percentage. CRST pay percentage. Um, every company has their positive. Just wait. Yep. Show, show is. You can't talk. You talk about, uh, you know, this, that, the third. If you're making money at that company, baby, do your thing. You hear what I'm saying? Uh, my son drives, so I started reading and watching everything to do with trucking. I'm glad I found girl, she like girl child. I'm glad you found me too, honey. They say I'm kind of country. I'm from Mississippi, back in the South. You know, I don't say all my words out correctly and pronounce everything, you know, but I ain't in no office environment. I'm with y'all. I'm chilling with y'all. So half the words are going to come out. You know, you might not get the whole word out of me sometimes when we just sit here having a conversation. But at the end of the day, you'll understand what it is. Um, girl, Shilly, I just laid back, child, trying to stay drama and stress free. free. That's all. You know, that's it. Day by day, trying to take it one day at a time. Um, I know. <laughs> I have as a uh, but yeah, and working hard, grinding it out. You know, you 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 got to do what you got to do. And I, I can't even, sometimes I can't even sleep at night because there's so many things that I, I just, I've been waiting for six years to do. And now I got the opportunity to do it. It's like, I gotta, I'm trying to put everything in place. I'm trying to do the website. I'm trying to do this. I'm doing the recruit. I'm doing the, 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 trying to get the dispatching. I'm trying to, you know, I'm just all over the place, but I can't stop. I can't stop because it's, 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 it's a lot going on and a, it's, a lot of people deserve to have, I just want people to win, man. It's like, God, it's hard out there. It really is. I want people to come home when they go out for six, seven years, come home with something, have a truck if they want that, you know, to have something, you know, that's all. So I got to do what I got to do. If it's knocking and beating on doors and, and asking questions and, you know, all this kind of stuff. I just got to do it. I got to I got to try to make a way, you know, and if nobody want to help me, nobody want to chip in or nobody want to pitch in or nothing. I just have to find a way to do it myself. Hey, I've been out here all this time almost by myself. So I might as well keep going. And I have the support from you guys. Y'all call me. You keep me encouraged. You send me messages and everything. So I can't stop. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me see. Yeah, but you got to, you know, once you able to, to reach a certain goal or once you able to be blessed, to be able to get out that truck, you, it don't stop. You still got to get back. You know, what, what's the use if you're not able to help somebody else? What's the use if you're not able to see somebody else shine? What's the use? You know, you want to just buy yourself all the time? You don't want to help nobody grow? You don't want to do nothing? Girl, you know they... Supposed to send me message. Get off the dirt, you too. Oh Lord, that's my developer, y'all. He working on my website. Um, they should have sent for both of uh, you now. He's trying to get the PayPal and the Stripe thing working up before he published uh, my website. The first part of it I didn't like, so I had him go back in there and revise a lot of things. So it's, it's a deadline tomorrow. So I don't know. I guess he work at night because he on the different time zone. But other than that, it's 9.30, y'all. 9.13, I got to go to bed. I got to get up in the morning um, and do it all over again. Other than that, I enjoyed it. I hope, you know, y'all enjoyed me. Peace, love, joy, and happiness. And y'all have a wonderful and blessed night. Stay encouraged. I love you. Bye. Thank you.